Hello, and welcome to the virtual AirVenture Oshkosh experience. My name is Jim, and I'm gonna be taking you on a flight today from Denver Centennial Airport over to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And we're gonna be using this awesome, uh, awesome equipment from Garmin with the TXI display for PFD, MFD, the GTN XI series, as well as the Garmin GFC 600. We're gonna go ahead and uh, launch off from there. So we're just gonna show you how easy it is to use in these complex airplanes with these awesome avionics, how we get to really relieve a lot of stress and how easy we get to make things. So for example, we're starting here in Centennial. We're runway 35 right. Uh, already knows that we're in Centennial from the GPS. So we're just gonna touch there. It says load procedures. And then we want the departure. And today we've been assigned the uh, MRS SHH1, easy for us to say. And for the uh, runway, we're on runway 35 right as assigned. And our departure point out of there is gonna be DDRTH. So right here, we already get a great overview of where we're gonna be at. It tells us that we're heading north and we're heading over to the uh, Jackson Hole area. You see all of the waypoints that are here. We're not gonna have to enter all that in. All we have to do is hit the button, load departure. It's already in there, which is awesome. Then you're gonna notice that all of our crossing restrictions are already loaded, that we have one at 8,000 feet we need to be at that point. Everything else here has been preloaded. If they give us a secondary one, all we have to do is tap where it says there, and then we can add the uh, according uh, cross restriction right there, it's that easy. Um, with all of this loaded, we're actually ready to go flying. Um, as we have everything loaded, we're gonna have vectors first, so let's go ahead and start the flight. All right, now that we're off the ground and we got the gear in the wells and we're off and running, uh, we are currently on our vectors right now, and we have a pre-signed uh, pre altitude of 17,000 feet. You'll notice that that is set here. Uh, we've turned the autopilot on, notated by the green light here. Uh, simple, simple action, just turn the autopilot on. We hit nav mode, which is now tied to, uh, to where we're heading straight out on our vectors as our last assigned, and pre-selected altitude of 17,000 feet, climbing out at 1,000 feet per minute. So right now, we're, we're letting the uh, autopilot do the heavy lifting for us, and we are cutting through some complex airspace, but the cool part is we're getting great situation awareness. We see that we just left Centennial Airport. Uh, we actually have some military airspace just ahead of us right here. Um, at Buckley uh, Air Force Base. We have another Class D airspace, and then we have Bravo as we're in, as we're cutting through that. And we have a great overall situational awareness. All the traffic overlays will be on here as well. And to get a more, a, uh, a little bit more of a uh, traffic view, you can see right here that we're getting uh, great traffic targets. And you can see that we have our end numbers are set up here as well. Um, and we even have a way to do relative motion, which means you'll see the green line there. That means they're actually turning towards us right now, which is important for us to know, but we're out climbing him right now as he's 3,000 feet below us and so not a big deal. Again, just great situational awareness on our climb out. Uh, Autopilot's still engaged. We're climbing through 8,500 now, heading up to 17,000. So to cross-reference over to the TXI, you'll notice at the top here, uh, we have GPS selected in green, which means that we are using the GPS. We are on autopilot mode and the yaw damper is selected with our vertical speed at 1,000 feet per minute. So all of our autopilot functions are across the top and they're redundant here on the GFC 600 as well. So for us, we have a great sense of what's going on, where, where we're cutting through and what we're going from there. And this is where they're gonna give us our direct to the first waypoint. So we go ahead and touch there, direct to and activate. And now we are heading to that first waypoint from there. And uh, from this point on, we're, we're gonna be a passenger as long as we're monitoring what's going on and uh, let the GFC 600 and the GTN controls from here. All right, now that we're on the en route section of the flight, uh, let's go through some things that we can do to really help kind of get you uh, a little ahead of the airplane. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the GTN. So overall, uh, when we're in level flight, obviously a basic map, but we need to start preparing for our arrival. So we're gonna go into waypoint information and we're gonna click on airport and it's gonna have our, our destination preloaded. Gives us our location, times, a lot of great overview here. Preview is awesome because it tells you what the runways are to expect. Uh, even tells us um, on which uh, side that we might even have hotspots. So as you focus in and you see here, uh, you can already be cognizant of when you land that there might be some things you need to pay attention to on the ground. Uh, procedures, all of the available procedures uh, that are available there. And you'll notice that we even load visual approaches. Really great thing about uh, the GTNs is it, even if there's not a uh, ILS or LPV 
uh, into one of the runways, there's a really good chance that we're going to have visual approaches to those end of the runways. It uh, becomes very helpful, especially as things are, you're going to unfamiliar airports. Uh, the runway overviews, I'll tell you how long the runways are, uh, what the runway numbers are, what your pilot control lighting, and the traffic. Just, again, a great reference for what's going on. Uh, but here's what, we're, what we need. We need a load ATIS. So we'll load that to the top here, and we'll catch that. Um, and then we're also going to expect to be talking to tower. Once we've received ATIS, uh, we'll be able to go ahead and flip that over, and then we'll preload the ground for us. Now, you'll notice that it actually loads the information of what we're talking to there. So if you accidentally keyed it in wrong, or if you accidentally... Uh, flip to com, you'd be able to tell right away that you're on the wrong frequency, which has never happened to me, not one time, but multiples. So uh, really good there. Other really good thing we need to know is weather. Always important, especially on these longer cross countries. Um, for the weather data, it gives you kind of a, a decoded version, meaning just read it like normal. So in this case, our visibility is 10 miles. Uh, winds are 160 knots at eight, or 160 degrees at eight knots, which is pretty favorable for us today. We should be able to expect a visual approach uh, even if they hand us a, an instrument approach there. Uh, altimeters, everything's set in here. And if we want to look at the future, the TAF is loaded there for us to take a look at. So again, we just have that great situational awareness. If you have that Garmin ADS-B on board, uh, we'll be even, be even even be able to pull in our NOTAMs. So from the GDL-88 or the GTX-345, uh, they'll preload all the NOTAMs in there for us as well. Uh, again, so that's just great information. Now that we're loaded there, uh, we're, we saw the winds, we're kind of expecting to land our runway 19. So let's go ahead and, and take a peek at what procedures we have for 19. So we still have the departure loaded in from previously, and you'll come and look and see, all right, I have an RNAV Zulu LPV, uh, we've got a VOR DME 19, and the visual 19. So why don't we go ahead and challenge ourselves to the RNAV 19 Zulu, and if they ask us, that's what we're gonna do. So just to be ahead, we're gonna go ahead and load that procedure, okay? Then you'll notice again, they gave us our crossing restrictions are preloaded in here, uh, which is awesome. So um, a, great, a great thing there. Next thing, let's take a look at some of the engine data that we've had on board. Uh, we're gonna move up to the TXI display at the top here. So this is our <clears throat> GTN TXI EIS, and you're gonna notice that we have a great overview for, for your mainline instruments here. Uh, this is a primary use of your engine instrument system. And you get your manifold pressure here for both engines, your RPMs for both engines here, and then your gallons per hour uh, here for both engines. The really great thing about this is we don't need any fuel since we're flying on the ground. So you'll know that our fuel quantities are, are, are set at three gallons. So getting great efficiency today. Um, oil pressure, uh, oil temps are in here. The really cool thing is for EGTs, uh, you can go ahead and select each uh, cylinder as you go through for either side. Same thing, uh, cylinder head temps here and then EGTs on top. And if you leave them alone for uh, five or six seconds, they'll automatically go to the hottest one. So you always keep an eye on the hottest, hottest cylinder heads. So another really great thing here is that you're gonna be able to load all of the POH uh, requirements as far as you know, yellow lines, red lines, uh, any of the enunciations will be loaded in from the dealer. But then you also have pilot selectable ones that you wanna load in there. A couple of the airplanes that we get to fly uh, tend to get hot and hot quick after you get to like 390 degrees. And once you get to 410, we have to really start bringing it back. Where I'd rather get a notification personally at like 385 uh, because I can lean it out a little bit or maybe get a little more airspeed and control it on that front end more than I would then. You can actually load that pilot, uh, that pilot advisory there from the beginning as you get that enunciation to say, oh, hey, we're getting a little warm. Uh, you, can, you can tackle the problems before they become a bigger issue. So uh, again, that's really great things that are loaded in there for us. Another thing that is really, really awesome, that is a great uh, why Garmin, in my opinion, is all of this information is really great, for except if we miss something or we have some questions, all we need to do is spin down here to our iPad, and you're gonna notice we are actually streaming all of that engine data, okay? So you get to see all of your cylinder head temps, all your EGTs, everything in here. You can even go backwards in the flight and go back to your client and say, maybe my left engine was running a little hotter than I thought. You actually literally just go right backwards in time and you could see it all from there. And then once you're done with that, you just swipe it away and we're back to the map. So again, our engine instrumentation is being connected down to the iPads and are being ran across even to our TXI displays as well. So really a great overview from there. Now let's find out we're running a few minutes late. How are we gonna tell anybody? Great question. We're gonna run into the GTN here and you're gonna see something called services. And you'll notice here that we have uh, a couple different services. And one of these things is gonna be using a Iridium uh, modem that you're gonna be able to install separately. 
It's a gray box the pilots never see, it just gets installed, and it actually gives us access to a satellite-based communication system. So, um, fancy way of saying you're gonna have a sat phone on the airplane. So you literally have phone numbers, and we're gonna go ahead and dial in phone number here, hit enter, and then I want just the passenger to be able to talk because the pilots are gonna be busy. And then at that point, all you're gonna do is hit call, and it's gonna rip off a call, and the passenger will be able to talk. If they say they wanna to talk to you, you just select the pilot, you come on board, you'll be able to have that conversation, and then when you guys are done, you simply come out. That will come out of your headsets. Um, you'll be able to use everything. You don't need another handset or anything like that. Uh, really, actually, a great quality uh, phone call. Uh, I've used it multiple times for calling ahead, um, or if we've left something behind, we can call backwards and, and let them know how we are. If it's not time for a phone call, things are gonna get busy, we can fire off a text. Uh, this is short burst text. What that means is uh, you'll be able to send small text messages to either cell phones or emails, and they'll reply back to you, and then you'll get the notifications that you have a message, and you can go from there. Now that we've fired off the information to the ground via the uh, Iridium Satlink, uh, let's go ahead and jump in on getting some more information on the weather. So we have onboard weather radar that we can show here. So simply to go to weather, um, we'll be able to go ahead and paint the weather here as it comes through and you'll be able to see that this, this is here. If we want a better look at this, we can actually come back in here, hit the resize button and bam, we have a huge screen now that we can look, overlay on the map. And then actually we can bring that radar right on to our map page here. And you can see that we can overlay that radar. In this case, you're gonna notice that that cell's on the other side of Jacksonville, which is exactly where we want it. So uh, this works out really well for us to get a good tactical view of what's going on. So it looks like it was a VFR day there, which it still checks out to be, and that large cell's on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and sneak in there before there. Um, other great things that we're gonna be able to do here is now get the chart loaded uh, for what we expect, and you're gonna be able to see the charts here. So again, we're really taking the whole package, using it all together, and getting that great sense of uh, situational awareness, and really relieving a bunch of stress off the pilot, especially if you fly, fly single pilot IFR. Uh, you have such a great idea of what's going on and connectivity everywhere. You know where the weather's at. We have onboard radar. Uh, you really have all the tools right in your hands. All right, now we're starting the approach, and I'll go through how we did that. Uh, simply just touch here, and we hit the, the first initial waypoint. And from that point, you just hit direct to, brings up that point and direct to activate, will actually activate the approach for us. So you'll be able to notice that the GPS is, is still armed. We're at 11,000 feet as assigned. All we need to do to arm that approach is to, is to hit here. You'll notice the GP come on, and that lets us know that we've armed the glide path. And uh, you'll notice that we're gonna reach our top of descent in one minute because that was the assigned altitude for 11,000. And you'll notice that the rest of the altitudes are already preloaded. And if we jump back to the map page, uh, you'll notice that those are actually assigned already on the map for us. So we have a great overview and expectations of where we're gonna be, obviously seeing us on the map and where the altitudes are. If we jump back to the uh, TXI display, you're gonna notice that we're right here on the chart, uh, geo-referenced here. And then if we want to jump back to full as we, as we begin the landing phase, you'll see here that our vertical uh, guidance is starting to come in as well as our lateral guidance will start coming in here in a second as we're making that final turn in. And you're gonna notice we have a beautiful picture from synthetic vision. Um, if you're actually shooting an actual approach, I would care that there's that many mountains out there. Uh, just gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling as we make that turn inbound. And hopefully that shows how easy it is to use our equipment and when everything's integrated together, how, how easy it is and how much uh, pressure we get to relieve off of that, that pilot. So any additional questions, all you need to do is reach out to your local Garmin dealer or you can find information about contacting us directly on Garmin.com. Thank you so much, have a great day.